Okay, looking at the experiment to measure uh, acceleration due to gravity using the method of free fall. We have an apparatus here which looks fairly complicated, but we want to reduce it to the bare minimum. So in terms of you revising and putting this up in an even start exam, you certainly won't need to be producing all of these wires. But what you will need to produce is an electromagnet with the ball underneath it. There is a timer, and there is a switch here, which is going to disconnect the first circuit, which will mean the electromagnet switches off. The ball falls down. You've then got a trap door down here, which you can hopefully just uh, get a picture on there. When the ball falls through the trap door, it breaks the second circuit and then stop the timer. So just for revision purposes, if I stick this up here, you can focus on that just to briefly show you what you need. Just give me a thumbs up when it's there, okay? So basically what you've got are two circuits. The top one is controlling the electromagnet. The bottom one is controlling the timer. And connecting the two of these circuits, you have a switch, okay? So when that switch is currently connected to the top circuit, you've got a power supply, you've got the coil going around the electromagnet and back up to here. So once the switch is up here, the top circuit is activated, but the bottom circuit is broken. The bottom circuit starts from a wire here, going down through the trap door, through the timer, and all the way over here. The switch is currently, is currently up, therefore the bottom circuit is incomplete. When I pull down that switch, it'll break the top circuit, therefore this no longer becomes a magnet, therefore the ball drops. While it's in mid-air, we now have the bottom circuit complete, so the timer works. As soon as it falls through the trap door, it breaks the bottom circuit. A timer will therefore tell us when it started, when the ball started falling, and when it finished falling. Okay? So we're going to do a sample run. The idea with this is that we do six or seven runs, and we should finish up with a graph. Uh, and from the slope of the graph, we should be able to find out acceleration due to gravity. So nice and quickly, this is the switch, which currently is connected up to the top circuit. When I pull it down, this electromagnet should, uh, should no longer be magnetic. Ball falls down, and while it's falling, can you now concentrate on the timer if you got it? So tell me if you got the readings. So I'm going to open this, three, two, one, go. And while the ball was falling, our timer was running. As soon as it broke through the trap door, the timer stopped. So if I'm reading here now, find four, six, two, and my units are seconds. So all I've got to do is do that seven or eight times to get seven or eight readings. But if you are doing this experiment, it's worthwhile checking it once before you do all the other readings to make sure you get a rough idea of your calculations to make sure you're in the ballpark. So I'm going to do a sample set here. And uh, we've got a reading of it of 0.462. I need to measure my length. I do it fairly roughly. And the idea is that you measure from the top of the trap door to the bottom to the bottom of the steel ball. So let's get back on to make sure it's activated my electromagnet. Mm -hmm. Stick that up there. And roughly, this will take couple of seconds from there up to there and don't know if you can get that or not Harry probably not but it's yeah. about 103.6 so it's 103.6 centimeters so my length is 103.6 my distance my time is 4.62 and the equation I use I can stick it here my distance is 103.6 centimeters so in meters, it's 1.036. The time is 0 0.462 seconds. In fact, ideally, that camera should be looking over my shoulder. That will tilt down, will it, if I go over here? Can the camera tilt down after the readings there? You can make sense of them, just about. So the equation for free fall is S is ut plus a half at squared, if I go back over. Initial velocity goes to zero, so it's S is a half AT squared. And my acceleration is acceleration due to gravity, so it's S is G over 2 T squared. So if I have a value for S and I have a value for T, I should be able to get a value for G. So cross multiplying, G is going to be 2S divided by T squared. So it's 2 times 1.036 divided by my time, which is 0 0.462 all squared. And if I work that out in my calculator, I get an answer of 2 multiplied by 1.036.036 is equal to that, divided by 0 0.462 squared equals 9.7. So 9.7, an acceleration due to gravity should be 9.8, so it's there thereabouts. Okay? Now, if you're asked this in your literature exam, 
you've got to be able to explain how you carried out the experiment, and in doing so, you have got to be able to explain how you obtained a value for each variable. In our case, there are two variables, so you've got to mention how you got a value for length and how you got a value for time. And you will then say what you changed in order to get a second set of values. So in this case, you would have decreased the distance and gone a second time. Right? You then finish up with a graph, and the graph in this case is S against T squared. And from the slope of the graph, you can work out a value for acceleration due to gravity. If I just do a sample set back over here again, to work out what goes on which axis, I set up my equation as S is equal to G over 2 T squared, which is what we just had. Compare that to the general equation for a line, Y equals MX, and that therefore tells me that S goes on the Y axis, T squared goes on the X axis, and what I should finish up with is a slope corresponding to G over 2. So the slope of my graph is g over 2, therefore if I want to get g, it's going to be equal to 2 times the slope. Okay? And that's pretty much it. So apart from that, the only thing I have to talk about is possibly sources of error. In this case, if you again, if you're looking, anytime you're looking for sources of error, you've got to say, well, the error will be associated in measuring our different variables. Now, our two variables were time and distance. So the problem associated in measuring distance, as you can see, was parallax error here in reading my meter stick, or in this case the measuring tape, and deciding which point here lined up with the bottom of the bowl. So that's parallax error. So to reduce parallax error, I want to make the length as large as possible. So the source of error is parallax error associated with measuring length. So to reduce that, make the length as large as possible. Or certainly make it greater than 50 centimeters for each uh, In using the time, the second variable we measured is, is time, and there are the sources of error there. And the big problem there is, we want that this timer to kick in as soon as I switch off that circuit, as soon as I switch that circuit, I wanted the timer to start. That should correspond with the ball falling. However, because that's an electromagnet, it may take a fraction of a second between the current switching off and the ball falling. Therefore, the timer here is running while the ball may not have fallen. So the time I get here might actually be a little too large than what the actual time was. The reading is, more, is larger than what the reading should actually be. And to get around that, the best way of doing it is maybe doing this three times and taking the shortest possible reading okay, of the three. Or the alternative is to make sure the ball falls a little bit more quickly is to put a little piece of paper or a little piece of cardboard in there and hope that it sticks. And this way it should lose its magnetism. This should lose, uh, this should fall down a little bit quicker because it won't feel the effect of the electromagnet as quickly or as long and therefore it fall down more. So a precaution would be to put a little piece of paper or a piece of cardboard up there, or alternatively to do this three times, and not as we would do in many other experiments, we don't take the average, in this case, we'll take the sharpest possible time.